Hello, everyone. Welcome to this session. My name is Wang Kang. I'm from Alibaba Group as a security researcher. So uh, today, uh, since you are the um, one of the um, several of the best hackers in the world, so uh, I uh, I will try my best to cut the irrelevant irre information out. So uh, um, today, I will walk you through some. Um, my uh, research findings during a lookup uh, at several infrared devices. So uh, I called it uh, who said hacking a fan doesn't matter. Um, me, um, I am uh, focusing on v I IoT, V2X, and uh, um, cyber physics systems and um, uh, do some security research or stuff. Um, uh, this is joint work with uh, Dr. Yang from CIICT. Unfortunately, he couldn't make uh, the trip here. Um, so uh, this is the introduction. Since you are hackers, I think no one cares about um, outline, I think. I don't care about our outline, just a formal outline. <laughs> so this um, is basically the uh, NEC standard of infrared remote control. Um, basically, you can think, uh, consider it as a uh, um, duty cycle modulation. Um, like the 25% versus 50% duty cycle uh, indicates whether it's one or zero. So uh, it's not a big deal. So tell me something I don't know, right? Um, the first thing I want to sh uh, mention is that um, regularly the uh, infrared light is uh, 940 nanometers and or 850 nanometers. So uh, why? It's going to use this to bend because um, the spectrum, um, the the water in the air, will absorb a lot of lights. But um, um, this infrared band will be absorbed less. So uh, this is um, number one reason. And uh, the second one I want to mention is why there is uh, going to need a carrier which. Um, is around 38 kilohertz to, uh, I, I think it's because there are so many infrared in the, in the sun. So uh, to, in order to uh, bypass, uh, to, uh, to reject some false positive, we have to uh, utilize a bandpass filter. So uh, the 38 kilohertz is used to pass, uh, let the signal pass through the, uh, yeah. So how can we get the uh, infrared code? There are regularly there is very uh, fantastic uh, database called LIRC. You you should look at it. Um, de uh, definitely, uh, um, basically all of your remote controls can be found out there, and uh, you can build up some uh, DIY gauges to uh, record and replay. Or uh, I want to mention is um, like this one is from uh, LIRC. You basically can fire up a Raspberry Pi Zero, and um, uh, you connect an IR emitter, and there you go. So uh, it's not a big deal. So uh, I want to show you something new that um, uh, recent days there are some new fancy phones such as the Samsung Galaxy S10. Um, this is a commercial off-the-shelf uh, uh, remote controller, and um, I want to show you is it has a super slow mo mode, uh, which runs at around 960 frames per second. And usually um, in iPhone, it's about 120 or 240 uh, to uh, 240 FPS. So uh, you, you can see the, uh, I, will, I will press the play button and you will see the red dot. Did you see that? Yeah. So. Uh, I, I was wondering if I can use that as a, a logic analyzer. So uh, I uh, convert these videos into different frames. And uh, I uh, uh, rename, uh, did you see the four dashes? It's indicated that um, the, the, the light is on. So uh, I cross examine it with a, um, a logic analyzer. This one is from the logic analyzer. So uh, the uh, this line is uh, file names. So you can see it um, fits very well. Take a um, closer look. Yeah, 
this is a B, the 312 frames. It fits, right. And um, later I want to um, calculate the timing. So um, we just uh, 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 301 minus by 197 multiplied by the frame rates. We get the timing. And from the specification, the timing is regularly, is roughly the same. So, uh, so far so good, right? Um, and this was a very lucky example. So let's see another not so lucky example. Um, this is another kind of uh, remote control. It's not uh, as the 25% or 50% uh, duty cycle. It's, um, um, th this one is um, way up uh, um, the uh, Nyquist uh, theorem. So uh, our system cannot um, um, uh, uh, sample it um, precisely. So, uh, but, but this can be um, solved by some modern communication technologies such as, uh, basically this problem can be um, considered as an undersampled signal recovery. So you can use a video ad trigger or uh, uh, multi-pass samples or uh, some fancy technologies, but think, I, I think it's soluble, right? Uh, so uh, the next thing I want to show you is uh, the infrared filling light. Um, you can see there are so many security, research, uh, security cameras out on the street. Uh, you, can, you get this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, different kinds. All of them, um, uh, during the night, um, the, whoa, what happened? Oh, during the night, the secure camera has to emit some infrared light to, to um, let the uh, uh, object can be seen in the night, right? So uh, um, this is another example on the street. Um, this is on the store, on the shelf. A lot of them are, all of them are, ha have the infrared filling lights. Um, I uh, took some apart and found out that uh, this is a socket and um, only has two power supplied to the filling light. So what we don't know yet is one, um, the first is whether it's 940 nanometers or not. And the second is the um, switching speed is it going to be fast as 38 kilohertz so that uh, we can pass the uh, band, fil band pass filter? And um, will higher transmit power matters? So having these, uh, those three questions, we have to do some experiment. So this one is a uh, DIY gauges. Uh, uh, roughly, it's a Raspberry Pi hat with a FPGA on it. So um, this one uh, is a... Uh, commercial off the shelf filling light I brought. So uh, I uh, fire up a signal generator just to test out it, the first two points. So you can see the uh, blue light indicates the infrared signal is received. So uh, from this experiment, we can see that um, it is 940 nanometers. And second, the uh, circuit of the infrared filling light doesn't um, cut um, our switching speed. So uh, the next experiment is about a larger one, infrared filling light. Yeah, you can see the green light, uh, the blue light, yeah. So uh, we uh, later on um, record some um, air conditioners, remote control signal and replay it if you can hear the sound, and um, the infrared filling light can be used as a um, remote controller. The air conditioner is turned on. And um, the next question is whether a security camera, um, how they are wired. So we looked into the manual of the reference designs of some security cameras. We found out that exactly the uh, LED is connected to the GPIO. Remember, there is a very fancy project called Pi FM to use GPIO to send FM broadcasting. It's used uh, um, DMA mode to uh, utilizing the um, um, GPIO as a signal generator. So uh, this one, 
Um, so I done some further uh, experiment that uh, that uh, the white one device is a security camera, and uh, the black is um, the original remote control just pla placed there to show that I didn't trick it. And um, you can see it works now. So uh, this experiment showed that uh, even if you think some not smart devices, some such a TV set, they are not connected to the internet. But um, if there is a internet connected security camera, maybe th this is the uh, way to break the air gap system or Especially some smart TVs, they are, um, they have browsers, right? Android TVs, basically. Yeah. So uh, what could possibly go wrong? Remember the PewDiePie Pi event? The printer thing, someone hacked a lot of printers to print out uh, advertisement. So um, maybe uh, this, um, we can be used to turn down the air conditioner, uh, conditioner at the same time massively so that uh, the grade, um, the uh, power grade will encounter some, some power surge or something. Um, so uh, this one is, uh, this photo is taken in the um, Netherlands. I found out that the security camera, the TV, is um, just uh, faced to each other. And this one is uh, just right the corner, the uh, the DEF CON street. There's a ramen um, uh, shop. So uh, you can see that, the uh, security camera facing the TV with infrared filling light. And this is a photo resistance. There's another way. I, I want to sh um, show you that um, some of the, the designs of the security cameras, they have photo resistance so that um, when the Light and um, when there, um, there is night, the um, light will be turned on automatically. But uh, it cannot be used because it's very slow, around 30 uh, milliseconds. So it's not usable. But um, it, just a try. So look at the bright side. Remember some audio guide in the museums. You can see um, you point audio guide onto the wall. The world device actually is emitting some infrared signal that um, uh, turn down your audio guide to spe special, specific um, um, uh, MP3 files or other things. So um, maybe you, you, you see that one is a secure camera. Maybe we could just use that, that uh, infrared light to do some like um, watermark thing. So one more chapter. I think this chapter is um, um, quite interesting. I call it the poor man's spatial light modulator. And the following will be a commercial from Kaspersky. Uh, do, do, do we have uh, audio from, from uh, this HDMI output? Let, let me try. Yeah, basically, yeah, there is no, uh, let, let, let me do this. Um, in a party of uh, a CSO, a hacker hacked the fan and uh, ask him to pay some money. So he said, go hack yourself, hackers. Actually, he, he is saying that. And um, so Kaspersky's point is, there's nothing left to hack when your business is protected. So hacking a fan doesn't matter. So who said hacking a fan doesn't matter? Um, remember, there are so many things that are uh, rotating. Let's see, the DVD has um, roughly 10,000 revolutions per minute, right? And the car, the wheels, roughly uh, um, 700 RPMs. And uh, for an uh, electric drill, there is around um, 10K to 50K. So uh, to get 38 kilohertz signal, um, if we drill some holes on the disk, or uh, uh, let's say 300 holes, we need 7,600 RPMs is enough and uh, for if uh, it's 100 ho uh, 150 holes, it's roughly the uh, DVD could handle it. So uh, as for Amazon Alexa, you can see there are 84 holes on it. 
it's just a joke. No, nothing matters. Okay. So this is an electric drill, and then this is a um, uh, has 150 holes on the disc. So uh, we uh, start with some experiment to calibrate the system and to calibrate the uh, revolutions per minute, and then we. Uh, then some, uh, let, let's, see, let's see this one closely. There are one, roughly 150 holes on the disk. So we connected it with a drill, electric drill. Let's see the final result. So this one is a um, infrared emitter that emits a steady infrared light. And this one will cut the light very fast. And the um, blue light indicates that it's receiving a, a valid infrared signal, remote signal. So let's see. Turned on. Yep. Off. On. Yep. You see that? So uh, if um, a fan is hacked, maybe we could turn up its uh, rev um, RPMs, and we could use it as a spatial light modulator to it's uh, a bit of sci-fi, but I think it's um, definitely doable. So what's next? This is a, um, a video I borrowed from Twitter. So uh, maybe we could just emit the infrared light to the uh, some like um, the the film is rotated very fast, so it could be used as a recorder for physical recorder for infrared light. Yeah, and uh, one more thing that uh, iPhone 10. Um, you can see the back cell phone is iPhone 10. The front one is uh, Samsung Galaxy. So uh, you can see the white dot is the um, Face ID. Right. I haven't um, get a clue how to use it, but I think it's worth research. And this one is from the Canon. Um, they also have infrared sensors to detect whether you, your eyes is closed. Um, a future works, maybe you could use some fancy uh, um, phantom uh, uh, cameras with very, very high speed. Actually, have you seen the YouTube channel called uh, Modern Rogue? Uh, the, the people are just, uh, just down the next room. I just saw them. They, are, they, they have done some very cool demos. Um, some other techniques, some, uh, like, such as a virtual frame technique, they can be used to um, f compress the same thing that increases the frame acquisition rate. So they can use a slow camera to um, film faster, cam uh, faster things. But um, it has to be a motion object. It's not uh, rotating things, I, I um, doubt it. So uh, the next um, some opportunity, maybe we could use this technology to do some spy cam detection or infrared video watermarks or anything else. So the key takeaways, uh, so the first is switching rate of the infrared filling light is enough for infrared remote controlling. Um, the counter is we shouldn't directly connect the infrared filling light to GPIO. At least we, we should use some filter to avoid it generate it being switched on and off very fast. And the second one is um, the commercial off-the-shelf cell phone camera. The high-speed camera can be used as a potential logic analyzer. And um, some we, we made some home-made poor man's spatial light modulator. And, um, Final of um, sci-fi thoughts is um, maybe we could uh, utilize some supply chain risk so that um, a regular LED is uh, actually an infrared LED. So that um, um, like every uh, indicator of the light is a backdoor. So we should uh, bring some attention to it. So thank you. Any questions? Any questions? Directions? Questions? Directions? Hi.
regular IR. I think um, oh. So the question uh, question was um, um, a regular LED is it available? Uh, it is possible to emit some infrared band. I haven't done the uh, research, but um, I highly doubt that because uh, um, due to the cost of benefit, I think the manufacturers will cut uh, the um, irrelevant um, emit. Yeah. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay, thank you guys. Hope you enjoy the show later. <laughs>